Welcome back to the channel. It's Mopar Man 1978 here. Finally got a halfway decent day after about a week or two of crappy weather. Uh, the first week was uh, single digit temps and then up to got in about the teens, low teens uh, for several days uh, with ice. We had a nice little uh, couple days worth of uh, ice on the on the uh, on everything around here and then it melted off within the next two days um, so yeah about two weeks worth and then this, uh, the second part of the week which it just stopped today looks like it's trying to clear off it's almost 50 degrees here um, nothing but continuous rain day and night it's been staying in about the uh, upper 30s at night low 40s during the day so but anyway want to do an update and say thanks to all the uh, um, new subscribers to the channel I uh, appreciate it um, also to let all the newbies know this goes for any YouTube channel or if you've got if you're starting a YouTube channel uh, make sure that anybody that subscribes to your channel let them know to at least post a a comment on in the comment section on your videos if they've sub just subscribed um, that helps the algorithms and stuff and it guarantees your uh, free subscription to the channel because uh, what YouTube likes to do is randomly go through people's YouTube channels and if they're seeing that the subscribers are not really interacting with their channel that, they, that they're a fan of or, or whatever um, they like to randomly delete your subscription um, it could be a couple subscribers or it could be 10 subscribers or what it just depends on how many you got on there and whatnot so even if it's just to say hey you know hi whatever or just awesome content or just to give a thumbs up or something like that you know um, it helps the channels out but uh, today since it finally stopped raining for quite a while, I don't know if it's supposed to rain the rest of the day or not, but I wanted to show you because somebody, because I belong to different uh, automotive groups on Facebook as well, um, especially one dealing with thermoquads, they wanted to see what I did as far as doing a manual choke on a thermoquad. So I'll show you real quick. I got to have the, uh, I got to get out here and then and get the uh, new vacuum advance put on the uh, distributor. I can't do it today. I'm getting ready to head to work here in about 30 minutes. But um, this this is the old one. I just set this here to be out of the way and to uh, cover up the uh, vacuum port over here until I can get uh, it taken care of. But anyway. Um, as you can tell, so much moist, so much rain. We've got moisture collecting on and water beating up on everything in here. Anyway, um, I had uh, since this is a um, air gap dual plane intake made for the Chrysler LA slash three eight or slash uh, Magnum engines. I had to basically make my own bracket. Um, there we go. So I made all this myself because the way the thermoquad is set up, you can't really put the back part of the bracket on the back mounting bolt, base plate bolt, because the uh, vacuum assist um, is bolted there and there's a lot of stuff in the way. So I had to come down to. Here, I'll show you down to this bolt hole that's, that was um, ca uh, casted into the intake and I just made my bracket but anyway um, I welded this piece up and because I took several measurements what I needed and then what I did is I robbed parts from out of one of those deluxe manual choke kits that you can get from O'Reilly's on the shelf I used the, uh, all the nuts and screws and bolts and this bracket piece right here that pushes up and holds the uh, choke cable in place, the, the spiraled tube. 
I also robbed the uh, angled bracket here and the the, uh, the bolts and the lock washers and the, the star washers and then the little brass fitting that slides through here all I did was I uh, reversed this and then on the actual uh, thermal quad bracket where the rod would normally they from the uh, the, co the heat coil that the rod would come up from the heat coil from off the original intake I actually had to take one of my I bought a uh, a three pack step bit kit quite a while back and the skinniest one I used that because it has the finer tip on it and all I did was uh, drilled out the hole on the factory bracket a little bit bigger to for this screw that's in the uh, manual choke kit to go through and so that's got bolted up and then like I said I used a little brass fitting on this side I can't remember if I had to drill this hole out a little bit bigger on this side for this to slide through but as you can see it's all mounted up like it's supposed to be and one thing with the thermoquads, if you're going to do a manual choke, uh, let's see if I can get a better picture of it here, or photo, or, or angle, I should say angle, not photo, this isn't a camera. Um, this linkage right here, this whole, this, uh, this, this little, uh, loop right here that the linkage fits inside of see that gap right there you're gonna have to put a, a spacer of some sort in there whether it be a little screw a pop rivet um, something in there to fill that gap because what will happen is no matter how well you adjust your uh, manual choke rod this will always want to close on you no matter how much you adjust for the, this flap here to go front and close. You can get it to where it stays open manually with the, with the choke cable, but once you think you've got it adjusted, this whole uh, choke plate is gonna wanna close on you and completely cut off the carburetor. So you're gonna have to fix that gap to where this linkage, this rod won't slide back and forth like this and then when you go to close your uh, manual choke you're going to want to have just maybe an eighth of an inch gap back here to start it up on cold days and cold nights but what you'll also have to do is because your thermoquad relies on this linkage to help with all this other linkage back here once the engine is fully warmed up, then you're going to have to take the, the choke off, completely off. Just push this completely forward in order for the rest of this linkage to work back here. Otherwise, if you leave it closed and you say like you try to kick in the big secondaries or stuff like that, this is going to affect how the vacuum assist over here, uh, it won't open up. It'll, uh, it'll snag it to keep it from... Uh, working like it's supposed to so basically you're only using the choke to start the cold engine up and let it warm up and while it sits here and idles not trying to mess with it going down the road and then once it's fully warmed up leave that choke wide open for the rest of the carburetor to function also um, another thing I did is I'm going to finish fixing this um, I'm, I'm taking the slack out of this. Let me get around here. I'm taking the slack out of the groove because this has got a rectangular groove on each one of these settings for the uh, accelerator pump to squirt. Well, I notice there's a little bit of a delay when you go to give it the squirt. There's a little bit of a delay and then this rod finally pushes up and causes this to come down and squirt help the uh, plunger squirt so I'm going to be taking that slack out of there to make sure there's not like a hesitation which it doesn't have a hesitation anyway but I just want to make sure it gets a good squirt of gas especially if I'm going to drag race with this truck um, but anyway I do have to reverse somebody mentioned it in the comment section I do have to reverse this S linkage piece here to go between 
lever and the pump itself. Supposedly it's backwards, but from what I saw on the different uh, photos, it looks like to be correct, but we'll try it out. Um, I got rid of this linkage here. I don't need the fast idle linkage, and I went ahead and uh, got some construction wire, heavy duty wire wrapped around this, so this linkage is locked up, so when I do get all the way back, it does engage the big secondaries like it's supposed to. And then the other thing, since this is a smog 360 small block thermoquad, it did have this electronic slash vacuum assist solenoid on the back. All I did was I took the solenoid off, took a piece of thin aluminum plating, made a template, cut it out, using the uh, gasket that no would normally go here but in between this and the solenoid and then what I had to do is I had to measure the machine threaded screws on the back and cut some of them down depending on what side because there's three screws that go on here to hold that solenoid on and then um, uh, anyway uh, so I made a, a, a block off plate, but what I did is also in the middle of that block off plate I drilled about an eighth of an inch wide hole for ventilation for the uh, fuel bowls and to release pressure from when um, The secondaries kick in that sort of thing. I reconfirmed that with uh, the guy that runs that's uh, runs the thermoquad group um, he works on these and modifies them and racing or just stock replacements uh, he suggested that so I took him up on his uh, knowledge and it works so that's what you can do to get rid of that solenoid I also posted it on his Facebook group of the modification and showing what needs to be done um, so yeah this is a thermoquad on top of a air gap dual plane aluminum intake and all I did was I used a one inch spacer plate adapter plate that has the uh, spread bore flipped upside down it's an open plenum, plenum uh, spacer plate the, the, the uh, spread bore is facing upward and then the bottom half is for the square bore and then what I did was for the divider in the middle I went ahead and rounded the top of the divider out instead of having it flat uh, and it works great um, it really picks up and goes it really kicks in it kicks the in the seat of the pants takes off you can hear that thermoquad I'll be doing more videos um, this truck's ready to go I just got to get insurance on it so um, here in the next week or two since we got all over the from the holidays and uh, tax tax return stuff's getting ready to come up um, be getting this back on the road since got new tires all that stuff anyway uh, so yeah there's the update and um, with my tax return and um, the last year's bonus check that that you don't get until the new year comes around sometime in February I'll be getting that uh, we're going to get the uh, torque converter situation taken care of for the Valiant. Um, haven't forgot about the Dart. Just some other odd, little odds and ends. I got my 65 Dart. I got to finish up on as far as the rear suspension. I had just some uh, teeny tiny little pieces to finish up on the Dart as far as the rear suspension, but it's nothing big. And then uh, I can uh, start getting the, uh, I'm going to finish up welding up the floor boards, the floor patch panels. Anyway, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for more. I know it's been a while since I did a video, but like I said, I'm, I'm at the mercy of the weather and my work schedule. So, until next time.